Hello, it's Ken from Miniature Wargamer Warriors, and today we're going to try and paint uh, German uh, hair, so early war uh, style German. Um, did have a video up on the channel, but as other people were pointing out to me, um, couldn't see it, just couldn't see it, you couldn't make it out properly because my hands are always in the way. So I'm trying a different camera angle, see how this goes. Um, so yeah, I've I've stripped the model and I've uh, resprayed it in uh, Wraith Bone. So the first colour we're going to go with is Gilliman Flesh. So yeah, this is uh, a whole new camera angle for me and I'm trying something a bit different as well this time. I'm going to uh, record some audio after I've done the video. So I'm going to be talking you through it. So yeah, I'm just going through now with um, the Gilliman Flesh. I'm just aiming to get around their face and around, uh, obviously around the back of the neck. And you've also got his hands as well but it can um, be quite challenging sometimes with this contrast paint um, it does flow really nicely don't get me wrong but you can sometimes if you're not concentrating put too much on the brush and end up having big pools where you don't want it to I'm finding uh, realistically I use two types of different brushes so I use one which is the one I'm using now which is this blue one quite long, it's got quite a long bristle to it so it still has quite a nice bit of matte paint and I also use like a small detail brush later on in the tutorial I'll end up using a couple of different brushes trying a couple of different brushes out I'll point that out when I get there but yeah for now we're just literally going through uh, the Gillum and Flesh so I choose Gillum and Flesh really because over the, like the other types because it's more of a European style I've said it in some of my other videos like when I start doing Koreans and stuff like that, I'll have to try and uh, play with the flesh tone colours because um, I've got all the contrast paints, but it's just playing with the colours to try and match what it should be like to what you can get it to near as you can. So uh, I know that this uniform colour is not really the most, well, it's not the most accurate colour, you know. Some people um, prefer their models to be perfectly accurate when it comes to colour, but I'm not overly fussed. I don't really mind. I don't mind having an army as long as it looks nice and it's got some paint on it. I'm not not fussed, but I have tried with this one because um, I have stripped it obviously um, to get it a bit better. But there's certain positions like I've got the camera facing in front of me, literally sat in front of me, um, while I'm painting my hands, having to go around it and hold it in uh, position. And there's certain angles that you just can't do on camera. Like now, I'm having to tilt the model up this way because I'm having to try and get into it and you'll notice a few times I might accidentally um, clip the camera but it's just what it is it's like now um, just is what it is like I say but yeah it's not too bad everything's um, everything's going quite well with the contrast videos I can't moan about it um, everyone seems to be enjoying them all the videos I've had up till now, everyone's enjoyed them quite a lot. So yeah, and let's get on to the next colour. So now I'm moving on to Black Templar for the boots. Um, going up to like knee height boots with these. Uh, before I didn't really uh, check the model out properly. I did it in two different colours, which um, I thought they had shoes um, with like these gator things like the Americans did. But now looking back on it now, looking at the model in better detail. Does actually look like they are like the jack boots, as the uh, British would nickname them. So I've gone in with Black Templar, um, great colour Black Templar. Really is good for for blacks uh, in general. It is uh, yeah, well, I I think it's like Games Workshop do no oil and that stuff is amazing. Don't get me wrong, but just for getting one coat down of black and highlighting it at the same time gets in all the recesses I think it works so well um, I can't really can't moan at all to be honest it's um, one of these must-have colors I think if you were going to do the contrast side of things uh, the black Templar it seems to be very popular as well because a lot of shops I go into um, and a lot of people say uh, when it was first come out that you know that's the one that they struggled to get hold of the most the black Templar and to be honest with you it's the one I've probably used the most as well um, like a side note sort of thing it's like for my 40k stuff um, black is just a lovely a lovely colour that I um, 
used quite a lot of the time for like weapons and things like that so that's why it gets such a heavy use um, but it does leave a really nice finish once it's dried so I'm still painting the boots at the minute um, it's pretty much all the black detail you've got a couple of straps as well um, to get done um, on the back of the um, on the back of the, like, the blanket roll there's uh, the black there you've also got the black um, for the webbing and you've got the black around the rifle sling which I'll do a bit later on in the video um, because nothing's perfect um, I do forget things now every now and then it does happen right so now I've moved on to starting like the belt and the webbing um, I've changed my brush up basically I've put an army painter brush on um, which I wish I didn't now to be honest with you I wish I'd stuck with the two brushes that I know because um, I wasn't getting enough paint where I wanted it and I couldn't control it how I wanted it because you can see it's quite sloppy um, so I'm not not overly happy with it the, the uh, the application of what I was doing here so what I've had to do afterwards is I've had to go back and neaten up um, with like a base colour to go over it which is really annoying because I, I wouldn't have had to do that if I used the normal brush that I would have used um, as standard but you can see like trying to get used to this camera angle I'm having to hold it but I'm just going around the webbing straps at the minute and then just trying to do the front webbing bits yeah the focus on the camera I'm just trying to learn how to film in this new camera angle so I'm not showing you my hands constantly but yeah I'm just trying to work everything out but yeah I'll um, catch you once um, I start on the next next colour So what you're seeing now is I've literally just started uh, with the grey now, so I've started with silica grey, um, and as you can see I've put quite a lot on the top, and I've realised I've put quite a lot on the top, like ooh, I've gone quite heavy there, but then all of a sudden as you start spreading it around, it starts thinning out, it's like, oh, that's a bit of a relief, but what you can do, so you can act it like a bit as a palette, and that sounds really weird, but I've put it on the bottom where it's still wet, I can take... Um, some of the paint off which I'm doing now and I can apply it to other areas of the model so I want the rifle and that to be uh, the metal parts anyway to be coloured in the same bit of paint so I've taken some off of it and I just keep taking a little bit more off and I think to myself oh what could I do with that extra could I, uh, could I, could I pop it somewhere else but I'm just like literally trying to think to myself what is going on and then I have the great idea of, hmm, should I just do a grey for the trousers? Let's just do it. Let's use the grey. So, start applying to the start applying the grey to the trousers, basilica grey. And this is going to go on like the trousers and the metal parts of the rifle, because 
looked at all the artwork and things like that so the trousers seemed quite grey but the tunic itself seemed like a green grey so I wanted to have a difference between the two I didn't want to just have the same colour because like with the first model I did it was uh, all green grey and it didn't, I don't think it worked properly anyway so I've uh, decided to go with just the grey for the trousers and um, work that in so yeah uh, I shall see you after I've finished painting all the grey and I'll see you on the next colour. So we're now moving on to the major part of the model for me, which is the uh, hardest bit to do, which is the green-grey. Um, basically what I'm going to try and do is I'm taking contrast camo green and contrast basilica grey and I'm going to try and blend them in. So originally I went with a 2 to 1 ratio. I still found that to be very green um, overall. but. I decided in the end to go with like a 6 to 1 ratio of Basilica Green, no sorry, Basilica Grey and Camo Green, uh, Camo Creek Green, so I would uh, put 6 to 1 ratio down and it gave me this colour, so I was pretty happy with the colour once it had dried overall, I think it gives you a nice grey but there's that tinge of green in it that really uh, helps the jacket make a difference to the grey which you can see on the trousers. Um, so yeah really really helpful but like I say 6 to 1 for that ratio and that's all the green grey on the tunic So another thing I just thought I'd mention before uh, we move on um, to the next colour and the next bit of the model, um, the jacket realistically is probably the nearest I think I'm going to get to actually getting it to what I need it to be, so the German uniform colour wise, um, once it's dried it does go more grey, but yeah, 
I'm I am really happy with the color and uh, like I say I'd be happy to do my Germans in it but it's up to everyone you know you can just don't have to use these methods you don't have to use the same color scheme they're just there as a reference for people that are new to paints want to try something a little bit different maybe and it's there it's out there so people can um, have a go if they want to so now we're uh, moving on to the next part of the model and as you can see most of the model is you know it's got some paint on it um, so I'm gonna do the bread bag in this um, the uh, canteen and also like the wooden part of the handle on the entrenching tool um, I've done a bit of a contrast mix up again because I've tried to make like a khaki color khaki sort of green so I've got uh, I think it's Aragross Dunes or something it's Aragross Dunes maybe um, and uh, Creed Camo so I've done uh, five parts Aragross Dunes one part Creed Camo um, for the first attempt and yeah that worked that worked all right but it didn't get it to where I wanted so I, <laughs> I ended up going about eight parts Aragross Dunes to one part Creed Camo so it just gives it a little bit of a green tinge and once it's dry it does look really nice a really really nice khaki colour um, so yeah I then move decide to move on to like uh, giving the water bottle a go um, so for that I use a, a gargant fur that's the one but I paint the whole water bottle because obviously the top part of the water bottle is a black so I just paint the whole whole thing brown uh, you can leave it like this if you want but for more uh, realism you could uh, paint over it black which I do uh, at the end in the final mix up um, and then after that I uh, go along and I paint the handle with um, wildwood so nice nice dark wood color from there I just go straight on to Agros Dunes um, for the bedroll uh, I think it's quite a nice color um, for the actual bedroll itself it might not be the right color historically wise they might have used a brown blanket for example but I think that color is quite a nice uh, contrast to uh, the other colors on the model already um, so yeah I decided to go with that and then we start moving on to like the weapons uh, part of the model so start off with uh, snake bite leather for the rifle stock so um, for the wood which I do with all my uh, wood models for World War II the rifle uh, is like a is this snake bite leather because it does look really nice once it's dry um, Get, make sure to get both sides of the rifle it's not too much of a drama if you see where his hand is on the model if you miss on the far side uh, the actual snake bite lever because you can't really see it um, but you just want to make sure you get into all the little recesses underneath there um, and you've also got underneath by the hands you've got to be careful and make sure you try and get all the little bits that you think you might miss um, I go along with the rifle list so I take my time with this bit quite a bit but after I've done this I uh, move on to putting some grey, silica grey on the actual metal parts of the rifle itself see that's the really other nice thing about contrast if you're quick you can get mistakes off the model quickly if you're on a dried surface so like there I just uh, accidentally put some of the brown onto the onto the jacket um, and I've managed to wipe it off really quick with my fingers um, but what you can do you can see that um, there's some brown already on there on the uh, just above the bedroll um, I haven't been able to get that off so I'll just go over that with the base paint and then I'll just uh, correct it with the the color afterwards so yeah I'm going in with the black Templar again uh, just for the um, Webbing strap on the the rifle, so the wet, the sling. Sorry, I should say the sling on the rifle. Um, I'm going back in with that to uh, paint that black. Because um, again, I could have gone with uh, like I've done with the Americans, but I think black would be a bit more um, going with the German. Because um, like his webbing straps are like black leather, so I'm going to paint it black. It's just my model. It's the choice that I want to make with it. And uh, the final thing I do to the model is I put uh, Basilica Grey on the metal parts of the weapon. And uh, apart from that, I just go around neatening everything up. But that's the model done. Um, you can see a couple of pictures of it now. 
um, I hope you guys have liked this video um, and enjoyed it it's been quite an interesting challenge to make to say the least um, but yeah I can only apologize for the first one but this one um, I'm a lot happier with the German wise um, so yeah I hope you guys have enjoyed it and uh, if you haven't subscribed don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to be doing loads of uh, bolt action um, painting tutorials for uh, contrast paints if you're interested and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon